You're working really hard, you've got clients, but you know deep in your heart it's time to grow, it's time to scale. But deep down, you can't get over that niggling feeling that your partner isn't quite on board. How do we deal with that? Stay tuned and we'll talk about it today. Hey lovely lady, PB here, and today I want to chat all about partners. Not business partners, love partners. So the inspiration for this video came from a session I was doing with a client in my CEO collective. We were doing what we call a well-formed outcome, which is a process that we do to really help the client get very clear on the endpoint goal that they want. And then tapping into the subconscious, we help them to el elicit all the resources that they have and also really identify any internal blocks that they believe are stopping them from reaching this goal. So in this case, it was growing the business beyond $200,000 per annum. Uh, so when we drilled down deeper, uh, it ended up being a conversation around her husband and um, how she feels about how he feels about her business. So if you can sympathize with this, you're working really hard, you've got big dreams, and big dreams aren't just about you, they're about helping your clients, but also having something amazing for your family, yet you just feel like your partner isn't quite on board. Let's go through a couple of things that you can do to change this up. So how do we get our partners on board? Well, I hate to break it to you, but it's actually a little bit more about you than it is about them. You see, at the end of the day, this is your opportunity as a leader to really inspire, communicate and help people around you get really clear on what it is that you're building beyond just working hour to hour in your business. So 75% of the women that I work with have a partner that goes off to a day job every single day. Very different reality day to day. So the first thing I suggest that you do is actually set up a meeting where you two can get on the same page about what it is that you want collectively as a couple. So you're a team, you need to work out where the team's going. Really good way to do this is for you to actually both get really clear personally on what you both want as individuals, then coming together in a meeting and actually sharing that with each other and beginning to create a cumulative or a team plan so that you both know what's important to each other and where you're both going as a team and as a family. So once you've gotten clear on your endpoint goals together and what, what it is that you want, and these aren't just financial goals, these are lifestyle goals. So how often do you go on holiday? How often do you spend quality time together? When do you go on date nights? What do you do if you've got kids? How do you spend time with the children? So once you're clear on what the actual endpoint goals are, another really important part of this meeting is to really understand the internal drivers or the values that are really important to your partner. Really take time to listen to what is important to them and then start to, to find ways to actually connect the dots between what it is that you're building and how that's actually going to help them. Because often as entrepreneurs and as business owners, we're really driven with our greater vision, helping clients, having impact, growing the revenue. But when we're wanting to get someone else on board who isn't working in the business, it's really important to help them be able to join the dots between what this organization over here that you're building is actually doing beyond just having you work long, long hours. Once you've gotten clear on where you both want to be as a team, it's going to be really obvious that there's a bit of a gap. There's a gap between where you are now and where you want to be. And it's time to then start creating the plan for how you're going to get there. And that's not just about you doing the work. It might be you needing to get support with stuff around the house. It might be getting support with, you know, watching children if you've got children or just giving you the space to, to do the work so that you can actually achieve the goals, which again, now you're both feeling very much a part of rather than you just being off over here you know working really hard and them not really having any connection to what you're doing you know when everyone's communicating and you're both on the same page you've both got aligned goals and you both can clearly understand how the business that you're building not only contributes to you but to, to everything including them it's much easier to get them on board it's much easier for their energy to completely shift but the key here really is you. The key is you being able to step up and lead the conversation about goals, 
about what it's going to take to get to the goal, the goal and then helping your partner really buy into that vision, feel the vision so that they can be on board, be on the team with you, even if they're not necessarily working directly into the business. All of this contributes to you feeling better at home, feeling more content in your relationship, which ultimately means that you perform better in your business, which is exactly what you want. If you've enjoyed this, make sure you share this with other amazing sassy CEOs in your network. Can't wait to catch you on the next video. Signing off for now. Bye. Hi amazing one, I hope you're loving this video, if it's vibing with you and feels like it's the right fit for you, then please come join us over in our free Facebook group. I'd love to get to know more about you and your business really soon.